RCL is an abbreviation for the Rockware Command Language. This video is not meant to be an introduction to the RCL. We have other videos that show the basics of the RCL and how the script files are created. Instead, the purpose of this demonstration is to provide a more advanced example of what can be accomplished with scripts and to hopefully give you some ideas about how you can use it to streamline your job. By way of example, there's a sample file that comes with Rockworks titled Cole underscore one dot rw dat. By absolutely no means is the RCL limited to coal geology. We're just using this coal data as an example. When we load this file, we'll see that it contains a list of formation thicknesses and analytical data for 576 boreholes within a coal project. Notice that this is just a flat data sheet. We won't be using the Borehole Manager's relational database for this exercise. Just a data sheet to keep things simple. Let's review what's here. Each row represents a borehole in which the first column contains the ID, followed by the color easting, the northing, elevation, and thicknesses for overburden, an upper coal seam, some inner burden, a middle seam, more inner burden, and a lower seam. The remaining columns contain analytical BTU, sulfur, and ash content data for the three seams. Now, let's say that we wanted to spatially evaluate this data in terms of minimum acceptable parameters such as formation thicknesses and analytical cutoffs. The wrong way would be to filter this column data and plot what's left. This is a bad idea because it doesn't take into account the spatial continuity of geological data, which is a fancy way of saying that the data needs to be modeled before it can be filtered. Without the RCL, we would start by generating grid models and maps by using the map grid-based mapping program for each of the 15 columns. Then we would use the grid filters boolean program to filter each of these 15 grids based on various acceptable cutoff thresholds. Finally, we would use the grid and grid math program to multiply these models to see where all of the criteria are met. In other words, we're looking for areas representing the maximum profit or the minimum cost in the case of environmental remediation. That's a lot of steps, and we certainly don't have time to go through all of them during this video. Instead, we want to show how these steps can be automated into a single process with the following scenarios in mind. 1. Projects where complex multi-step processing is involved. 2. Projects where the input data is frequently changing, such as additional boreholes added on an ongoing basis. 3. Projects where an audit trail is desired. 4 complex projects that are performed repeatedly but infrequently. You know, the projects where you effectively have to relearn everything every time you use it. 5. Performing sensitivity analyses to empirically determine how various filtering parameters or cutoff levels affect resource estimates. 6. And finally, repetitious tasks that sap your will to live. Sound familiar? If so, then pay attention because this is incredibly useful stuff, albeit admittedly mundane. As described elsewhere, Rockworks menu configurations can be exported from Rockworks into text files such as this one. These files can then be combined and edited with any text editor 
such as the Windows Notepad program. RCL files contain two main types of commands, define and execute. The define command does the same thing that you would do when changing menu settings within a normal Rockworks menu. The execute command runs a Rockworks program using the settings established via the preceding define commands. It's not rocket science. There are no if, then, else, go-to statements or any logical mumbo-jumbo whatsoever. So please don't think that this involves any type of programming expertise. This particular command file is also included within the Rockworks sample folder as col underscore one dot rcl. You are encouraged to experiment by changing parameters within this file and reprocessing the data. Now I'm going to scroll to the top of this file and briefly describe some of the contents. Then we'll run it. Any blank line or line with a colon in the first column is ignored by the program. That's how we add comments or annotation. This particular file has an overabundance of comments and explanations because we're hoping that lots of people use it as a learning tool. So let's scroll down and look at some commands. We start by resetting all of the menu settings to make sure that we're always beginning with the same assumptions. Next, we turn off the help messages that will otherwise appear whenever the menu settings are reset. Then, we'll turn off the automatic display of maps because we're going to be making lots of them and we only want to see them in the final report. The datasheet command loads a file into the Rockworks datasheet. Next, we establish the project dimensions by scanning the XYZ coordinates within the datasheet. And now, we're going to create grid models for every column within the data sheet, including the overburden thickness, the coal one thickness, and so on. The next step is to create acceptable models, meaning grids that have been filtered into Boolean or true-false, made up of ones and zeros, based on user-defined cutoff levels. For example, the overburden thickness will be considered acceptable where its thickness is less than 33 feet. Conversely, the sulfur content within coal seams will only be considered acceptable where it constitutes less than 5.5% of the sample, and so on. The next block of commands multiplies these Boolean grids to create models where all of the parameters are acceptable. For example, this final acceptable C1 Boolean model is true only when the overburden is less than 33 feet and the top coal seam is more than 17 feet thick and the BTU value is more than 10,800 and the sulfur content is less than 5.5% and the ash content is less than 8.5%. In other words, we're essentially high grading based on a variety of parameters. Next, we multiply the coal thickness models by these Boolean models to determine just how much coal can be profitably mined. Finally, we combine all of these maps into an HTML report that will be displayed at the very end within your default web browser. So let's run this script and see what happens. Within Rockworks, double click on the coal underscore one dot rcl file from within the Rockworks project manager. The program will now crank away processing all of the commands within the script without any user interaction. The amount of time required to process all of the commands depends upon what you're trying to do. This can range from minutes to hours and with high resolution block models and pit optimization even days. In this example, the program will only take about one minute. 
Upon completion, the results are displayed within your internet browser. So let's see what happened. We start with a series of maps depicting all of the data columns including overburden thickness, coal seam number one thickness, inner burden number one thickness, coal seam number two thickness, inner burden number two thickness, coal seam number three thickness, coal seam number one BTU, sulfur, ash content, coal seam number two BTU, sulfur, ash content, coal seam number three BTU, sulfur, ash content, and total coal thickness for all three seams. Next, we'll be seeing a series of Boolean models depicting acceptable regions in red where overburden is less than 33 feet, upper seam thickness is greater than 17 feet, inner burden number one thickness is less than 26 feet, middle seam thickness is greater than 36 feet, inner burden number two thickness is less than 12 feet, lower seam thickness is greater than 54 feet, BTUs for all seams are greater than 10,800, sulfur for all seams is below 5.5%, and ash content for all seams is below 8.5%. In this map, we're seeing where the overburden thickness, upper coal thickness, and upper coal BTU, sulfur, and ash content are all acceptable. In this map, we're seeing where everything for the upper coal seam was acceptable as well as acceptable parameters for the upper inner burden and the middle coal seam. Here we're seeing where everything above and including the lowest seam are acceptable. And finally, we'll see an isopac map representing the total thickness of coal where all three seams meet the cutoff criteria. Admittedly, we could have made this analysis much more thorough and complex by adding additional parameters such as moisture and volatiles, computing additional factors such as stripping ratios and distances to control points for proven probable and inferred classifications, computing tonnages and ore grades and so on, but this video would be much longer. Hopefully you get the idea. If you add or change data within the original data sheet, just rerun the RCL script to revise the report. You can also change any of the cutoff parameters within the RCL file, rerun the script, and see how these changes affect your final resources. This is a form of sensitivity analysis. Finally, you'll always have a record of exactly which menu settings that you used to arrive at your conclusions thereby providing an audit trail for later on. Thanks for watching.